Coming up, I'm going to tell you the real reason why people quit on their career. And then 40% of workers quitting soon. We'll break it down. Half of hourly workers, no emergency savings. And I'm going to coach you up. Let's go. Coaching you to make more money and more impact in your work, which means you are going to enjoy Mondays. It's possible, folks. Let's go. Thrilled to have you here. Why do people quit? Why do people quit? This is a theme of today's show. We're going to be looking at this from a, several different angles. And um, I think some of you right now either are on the edge of quitting, you know somebody who has recently quit or somebody who's recently quitting. And, and, and I will tell you something. Quitting gets a bad name. You know, when I grew up, my dad used to say to me all the time, son, winners never quit and quitters never win. And I thought, well, that makes a lot of sense. Except then, then you, you realize phrases like that are half true, right? So the idea is, is that, you know, uh, there are points in life where you're going to have to buck up, draw everything you've got from inside, and as Franklin Delano Roosevelt once said, it's one of my favorite quotes, when you get to the end of your rope, tie a knot and hang on. It's a great quote. And I think there are times in life where you got to do that. Let me, let me tell you those times. I, I, in marriage, because I believe in marriage. I've been married 24 years. Let me just tell you something. There have been times where I've had to choose to tie a knot and hang on, Right? Not as many times as Stacy has. I, I should point that out. I got to be very careful here. This is this is this thin ice. It's not because it's anything horrible. I'm just honest. I don't believe you that your marriage has never been on the rocks on some level, right? May have been just for an hour, <laughs> but if you're going to be committed and have a marriage that lasts, I got news for you. There are times in your marriage where you will have to gut it out and say, "We are not going to quit." All right. Parenting. I got three teenagers. I hope I have hair this time next year. Jury's out. I don't know. It's tough. Anybody that's ever parented, it's hard. Teens are harder. I was talking to somebody the other day, a young couple. We were having dinner with them. They're like, oh, man, we're so exhausted. They got three under five. And we had three under three, three under four. We did that. It was hard. And they were talking about how hard it was. And I just laughed. Yeah, I'm looking at a, a nice couple out there. They got their three little cowgirls with them. It's hard. Can I just tell you all something? I got good news and bad news. The good news is that you're going to make it. The bad news is, is it gets harder from here. It gets harder. Wait till all three of those girls are uh, uh, teenagers. Oh, whoa. Yikes. The amount of this guy, this guy's got three girls. Sir, I didn't plan to say this today, but I'm just going to tell you the amount of estrogen that is going to be swirling around your house when all those girls are in high school, you're going to need a cabin in the woods. You're going to need a hobby. You're going to need some friends. Just, I'm just going to put that out there. All right, so parenting. Parenting's hard. There are times in parenting where absolutely you go, you know what, I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting. But this phrase, winners ever quit and quitters ever win, except for in, in areas of integrity and marriage and parenting uh, works but in our professional lives that's a bunch of crap it's a bunch of crap the great winners know when to quit they know what to quit they know where to quit too this is true but so many people quit too soon and that's what i want to focus on as we open up today is why people quit too soon because this is why so many people go through their entire life never having done anything meaningful professionally, and it has profound impact on them personally. And they get to the end of their life, and they have tremendous regret. And so this message is for people of all ages. And boy, oh boy, is it relevant. Snapshot of where we are right now in our country. According to a recent survey, one in five workers, not just in the United States, but globally, are planning to quit this year. 
According to the Pew Research Center, 37% of young adults left their jobs in 2021, while 17% of 30 to 49-year-olds left their jobs. By the way, I resent that the 30 to 49-year-olds aren't considered young adults. I turn 48 tomorrow. You can send all gifts to Ramsey Solutions. Uh, the, the address is on the website. I kid. I don't want you to send me presents. Uh, Four million plus people have quit their jobs every month this year. Goes all the way back to August of 2021. Folks, that is a staggering number. Did you hear me? Four plus million people. They're changing, moving, moving. People are sick of being treated like crap in these corporations. They're burned out. They're going, hey, I saw the pandemic flash before my eyes. I want to start my own gig. There's a lot of reasons. We'll cover that a little bit later. But what if you are on the path to purposeful work? You know that you're at least headed in the right direction, or maybe you're going, I want to find that direction, and I kind of thinking about it, thinking about it, but then I just kind of quit on the whole idea of dreaming. How about the quitters who don't who quit dreaming? Why do they do this? Because they have no destination. They have no patience. So the real reason that people quit right before breakthrough is because they lack patience. And the reason that they lack patience is because they don't see the big picture. They don't see a, a mountaintop. By the way, this is true why people quit working out every year around March. It's why people quit their diets. It's why people quit relationships. They don't have an end result. There's no destination in mind. You cannot persist your way into excellence and greatness. You cannot do it. Persistence will run out. You will. You cannot will yourself to greatness, to purpose. You can't. It is patience that allows us to persist. And patience is a discipline. And the only reason we can have patience is we go, you know what? There's something out there that is so worthwhile, I'll wait. Isn't this true of marriage and parenting? If we believe that something is worth waiting on, we wait. Another reason that people quit is because this younger generation, and it's our fault, it's the baby boomer's fault, it's Gen X's fault, if we've, we've created entitlement. And these young people, they expect something instead of appreciate something. They expect success instead of doing what it takes to reach success. And when they get there because the struggle was so freaking hard, they actually appreciate it. It's our fault. We have taken struggle out of our kids' lives. So two solutions to these problems. Number one, you need to get clarity on your unique role. That's why I do what I do. That's why I created the Get Clear Assessment. That's why I wrote From Paycheck to Purpose. That's why I do this show every day. You got to get clear on what God created you to do. Then you'll see it and you go, hey, I'm, I'll wait on that. And then you need to learn to embrace the struggle. It is the struggles of life that when we get through them, we now have the strength to actually be who God created us to be. So, if you want to guard yourself against quitting, make sure you have a destination that you deeply want to get to and then embrace the struggle. And you'll never quit. This is The Ken Coleman Show. So you just landed the new job. Congratulations. You've made it past the interviews and now it's time to onboard with excellence. That's why I created How to Stand Out at Your New Job. This free checklist will help you succeed from day one and may even help you get promoted. These practical steps set you up to add value, help your team win, exceed your leader's expectations, and ultimately set you up for a successful transition. To get started, just go to kencoleman.com slash new. One of the things that I will uh, believe to my dying day is that everybody needs a coach. Everybody needs a coach. Everybody. And I'm not talking about just in sports. I'm talking about in your finances, in your marriage, in your parenting, in your physical fitness. Everybody needs a coach. I love coaches. Uh, some of the most impactful people in my life to this day remain my coaches. I love coaches. I consider myself a coach. 
It's what I do. We're going to do it with callers a little bit later in the program. I love to be coached, and I love to coach. And so one of my dreams is to be able to create a roster of coaches who believe what I believe and have the heart for people that I have And because I cannot help everybody and the people that I can help, I'm helping in five to six to seven minutes. And, and, and I want to be able to create an army of coaches in this country, the people that listen and watch this show, if they need a breakthrough, they can go to men and women that I trust. And so we've launched Ramsey career coaching. These are world-class professionals. They've been trained, certified. I've talked to all of them. I've looked them eyeball to eyeball. I told them what I want and how I want them to treat people and they treat people world class. They're amazing. They coach executives on down to maybe an administrative assistant and they are standing by ready to help you. Uh, We are doing a trial, just kind of testing this, getting this thing going. Like I tell many of you when you launch something. Uh, So we're limiting it to about 30 participants um, and it's an investment. It's not crazy expensive, but I'm going to tell you right now, I'm making you people put what it is worth into yourself. You got to spend money to make money and you got to invest in yourself to be great. So go check it out. KenColeman.com slash coaching. KenColeman.com slash coaching. All right. Couple of stories to get to in the news. Let's go. According to a new report from McKinsey and Company, 40% of U.S. workers right now, 40%, it's a staggering number, are considering considering quitting their jobs in the next three to six months. So again, whether you've heard the term, the great resignation, uh, but this trend from August of 2021 uh, all the way through to where we are now, midway through 2022, over 4 million people per month have resigned. It is unbelievable. This is the greatest shift in the workplace that we've ever seen. And so it continues. The next three to six months, 40% of the U.S. workforce. So that's going to include people that have already switched. And it's just, it's like that old game that I played when I was in in elementary school, musical chairs. You know, people just moving around. It's unbelievable. Uh, And uh, here's the deal. What are the reasons? So now this has been going on for long enough that we have some reliable data. And I want to cover this. Leaders... Pay attention. I'm about ready to really help you understand how to navigate this because this has put leaders and businesses on their heels. Low pay, meaning they want better pay, is a major reason for people moving on. Uh, They don't feel like they're on a ladder. The way the article puts it and the study puts it, it's less career opportunities. I've been telling you, all of us humans want progress. And if people don't feel like that there is a ladder of opportunity for them to grow professionally and financially, I'm telling you, they will have a wandering eye. And in today's world, they're going to find something. Because somebody's going to pay them more. So, two major factors that are driving people switching, leaving industries, switching jobs, pandemic-induced burnout, And I got to tell you, I don't think the pandemic did much to that. I think it gets a lot of unnecessary credit for creating burnout. I think the burnout was already happening. And I think when people went home and their environment changed, they were able to exhale just by the nature of being at home for a while. I mean, think about it. So if you're burned out in the office and all of a sudden everybody's got to go home and you're wearing sweatpants and, you know, you're around the kids all the time and your environment changes, you don't feel all this pressure looking at you. I think there was a collective... I really believe that. So what I do think the pandemic did is I think it sh- I think it shined the light a little brighter for people as it relates to self-awareness to go, holy crap, I feel a lot better. I don't feel all the time. I think that is true and that happened. And then I think people said, wait a second, life is short. Am I being valued where I am? Can I make more money? Can I do more enjoyable work? So they sought, they sought out something better. Uh, now, here's what this has done. Because of all the musical chairs that I just talked about, you got people leaving and you got companies going, I can't find people because we are in a job gap situation. Let me explain that if you're new to the show and haven't heard me talk about it. 
We have right now north of 11 million jobs that are posted, if you will, that are available in the United States. But because our unemployment rate is at 3.6%, which is a, at a historic low, that leaves us at about a little bit north of 8 million people that are unemployed. So you got more jobs available than you have people unemployed. And then you throw into this, let's, let's just pretend this is a big giant mixing bowl. You throw those two ingredients in and you mix it up with everybody's going, hey, I can go from here to there and make 14% more. That's what the data is showing us. The average job switcher is making about 14% more in their income. Hello. So you mix all that together and it is creating opportunity. So you've got these holes. So what are companies doing? And this provides an opportunity for many of you in my audience. And that's why I'm sharing this. And actually, I'm thrilled about this outcome. It's about time. What am I talking about? Oh, this is exciting. Companies are now opening the doors for people they wouldn't have looked at before. Meaning, you don't have to have the degree or all the educational background that they wanted in the past. And you don't have to have all the experience that they've looked for in the past. They just want to know, do you have the raw talent or skill? They'll train you on the job. Let me tell you who I'm talking about here. I get calls from stay-at-home moms. I'm entering the workforce, Ken, after 15 years. Let me tell you something. Companies just need good freaking people right now. They'll train you how to do the job. There are opportunities out there that you never would have had before. Trust me on this. More than 70% of workers who quit their jobs in the consumer retail and finance insurance fields switched industries or quit the workforce entirely. So you see a lot of people getting out of consumer retail. What does it mean? A lot of crazy long hours. Low wages. So, in summary, people value flexibility as much as a raise. The data says that people value flexibility, where they work, how they work, how long they work, more than a 10% raise. And we saw new business applications grow by more than 30% with almost 5.4 million new applications in 2021 alone. So a lot of people said, you know what? I'm tired of working for the man. I'm going to go work for me. So uh, this is fascinating. Um, if I were going to talk to every leader in the country right now who's dealing with this and going, I got all these holes, I'm going to tell you what they need to do. Here's one phrase for you. If you take care of the people you have, you won't worry about getting the people you need. Part of the reason why people are leaving is, is they don't, they feel like they're in a toxic environment. They feel like their environment with their leader doesn't care about them, doesn't invest in them. They're just a worker. That's it. And that's a big reason why people are leaving. Next story. Now I want to get to this. Uh, this is a short little story, but new data out. 83% of hourly workers surveyed by Payday Advance app branch said they have less than $500 in emergency savings. $500, and nearly half said they have no savings at all. A report published by the Federal Reserve in May found that 32% of Americans would struggle to pay for a $400 emergency expense. That's why Ramsey Solutions exists. That's why we exist. Folks, that's not okay. That's not okay. You have to go get the extra job. You got to sell stuff. You got to cut expenses like crazy just to have an emergency fund so that you can handle a $400 expense because you're dragging this stuff to work. You're dragging this stress to work. So I'm just telling you, if you don't have an emergency fund of $1,000 right now, that's your number one priority above everything else besides your regular job. It's going to take a lot of stress out of your day-to-day -day work. This is The Ken Coleman Show. Did you know that just like a product, you have a personal brand? It's the image or impression others form about you based on your interactions. And whether we realize it or not, our personal brand impacts opportunities to grow in our careers. That's why our team created the Personal Brand Survey. It's free and it will give you personal and professional feedback so you can own your strengths and uncover any blind spots holding you back. To get started, go to kencoleman.com slash brand.
Welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show, where we coach you up so that you've got the competitive edge to beat the competition out there, so that you're making more money, you're growing personally and professionally, and you're headed towards that dream job, which is simply defined by you spending most of your day using what you do best, your talent, doing work you love, your passion, and producing results that matter to you, your mission. That is a man or woman who is on purpose and is unstoppable. And that's what I'm here to help you do, whether you are trying to figure out what that is, meaning you're in stage one of our seven stages, get clear, or you're trying to figure out how to get qualified in stage two, or you got to figure out how do I get some opportunities? That means stage three, getting connected, or you're getting ready to start or you're starting going, how do I stand out? That's stage four, get started, or you're on the ladder and you want to move up the ladder. You're not moving up as fast as you'd like. That's stage five, get promoted. Or you're looking to move into that dream job, stage six. Or you're in the dream job and you're going, Ken, what's next? Stage seven is give yourself away. You're working for legacy. So those are the seven stages included in my book, From Paycheck to Purpose. It really is the clear path for you to discover and do what you were created to do. Let's get to our phone calls. Grace joins us first in Gro Gross Point, Michigan. Grace, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. It's an honor to talk to you. I'm well, a little nervous. Honors, well, the honor is all mine, and you don't need to be nervous because I'm here to help you. Well, thank you. Good. So, short story. Um, I've been teaching for the past 20 years. I'm 52 years young. Yeah. And I, I know. I, I'm feeling young. I actually did a slip and slide this um, week with my niece and nephew. So oh, I'm Grace, people want to know more. How many so, times? How many times did you do the slip and slide? I did it twice. Um, the and first no, time was and no pulled muscles, no. no pulled muscles or anything. No, didn't oh, slip no, no. a disc. No. Nope. Well, this is very inspiring for fifty-year-olds. Uh, what's your problem? Grace did the slip and slide twice. Uh, right, I know. That's impressive. I, you, I'm already a big fan of yours, and we haven't even gotten oh. to the question. Sorry, well, I, I interrupted you. you, but that needed to be called out. That's impressive. Well, yeah. thank you. So <laughs> te <laughs> teaching 20 years, um, primarily um, early childhood, Okay. and last couple of years, I just do not feel fulfilled. Yeah. And... You know, I say I'm 52 years young, but I feel like I'm not young enough to make that career change. Well, that's not true. Okay. That's not true. 52 is is very effective. 62 is effective. We're in a job economy right now. If you heard me ranting and raving on the news articles just this last segment, where people yeah. need, listen, companies need talented people. They're, they're in a hole. They're, they're looking for talented people. Right. And you have got 20 years experience teaching young people. Good heavens. If you can communicate <laughs> and influence a young person, how much more can you do with an adult? I'm not saying I'm not telling you to go that direction, but I'm saying you bring organizational skills to the table. You bring communication skills to the table. You bring the ability to instruct and guide and train to the table. You bring the ability to put up with, um, in some ways, a chaotic environment and schedule. You, teachers are some of the most adaptable, some of the most... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, they're bulletproof in some ways. This is some of the crap that you have to deal with. Am I saying anything that's incorrect? No. <laughs> You're right. I usually am, by the way. But anyway, <laughs> the point is, is that you are an attractive candidate, true or false? True. Okay, then. What's your question? So I took your um, career assessment. Good. And, um, my, I just had it pulled up and now it went Take your time. Away and Take your time. Take your time. I'll know. just hum for the audience while you pull it up. Well, so what she's looking so for, you got it? My top skills are organization and, um, compassionate. Okay. Those are two. You had one more. You got your top I three. Know, and see, I, I knew that I can't pull it up. Don't it worry about it. Up. Don't worry about it. Do you remember but, what your passions were? Um, work you love? 
work I love was like um, hospitality project managers. Is that what you mean? No. No, no it, 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 don't cool. worry about it. You don't have your report. I don't want you to freak out on the air. You know what I'm okay. saying? I don't want to put you. But 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 the the issue is 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 that you took the 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 assessment and you got your detailed report, okay? And yes. you got a purpose statement, right? Yes. That came your way, and you're like, boom. And I'm asking you, how did that feel when you got it? When you read it, did it feel like it was on? Oh yes. Good. So I. What did it make you oh, think about? Oh, here it is. I got it. There it is, folks. She pulled it from the files. Yeah. Uh, let's skip ahead. Let's okay. skip ahead for the audience because if you haven't taken the Get Clear assessment, folks, you need to take it. It's 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 really really uh, f phenomenal in allowing you to see who you are. What was your number one missional result, which speaks to what motivates you? The results that you care deeply about. What was it? Number one. So is that? I'm going to take a guess. Step? I'm going to take a guess. Can I guess? You got it in front of yeah. you. Yeah. I'm going to say it was service or influence. What what did it come out as? Well, now I oh creation. I care deeply about creation. Wow. And then service. Service was high. Good. Service, okay. influence, good. and achievement. Okay, good. So those were all above the average line, correct? Yes. Okay, good. That makes sense. I'm fascinated by the creation thing, and so that is that artistic side of you. Um, that is really scoring high there and creating solutions or, and that could be creating curriculum. It may align with that. So what did you wonder about when you saw your results? Cause I know your brain started thinking about things that you maybe had thought about before and it confirmed, or maybe it shot new ideas to your head. What, what did you think of? I've always, um, <laughs> ever since I was little, little, I love organizing and making environments orderly and easy for people to locate things so how do we tie that to your number one motivation which we call mission in the in the assessment results that okay. really motivate you if that's creation but you've always loved organization i think you love creating systems for people that allow them to be organized and efficient is that true or false yes true Ah, you see how that all works together? That's a form of mm -hmm. serving people and influencing them, but really you scored high on creation. So you like creating organization systems or things of that nature. Is that true? True. Okay. So I think you've got to ask yourself, how can I do that and get paid? Do you start it on the side where you go in and you start creating uh, meal plans for, for moms? Do you go in and create... Uh, closet organizers i don't know i think you got to allow yourself to dream instead of be so worried about the exact job title how much it makes you just got to go wait a second who's out there in that space do i go work for a company you know do i and do i turn <laughs> myself into an advisor you know do i is this a ministry play where i go in and help you know maybe elderly folks who you know have not much family support or whatever and their house has turned into a disaster because of their health. You know, I don't, I don't know. I'm brainstorming. Do you see what I'm doing here? Okay. Love it. Yeah. So here's what I want you to do. Your homework assignment, since you're the teacher, I expect you to do this. <laughs> uh, okay. I want you to take that purpose statement. I want you to print it out. Okay. And I want you to put it on your mirror or your refrigerator, someplace in your house where you're going to see it nonstop. And okay. I want that version just to sit there as a reminder. And I want you to get to the point where you see that purpose statement over and over again, because we know from psychology studies that when we focus intently on something, we see things that we never have seen before. Okay. And you know, that's true. Having taught maybe yeah. a text or a curriculum many times, and the more you review it, the more you see things that maybe you didn't see before. I want you to use that on yourself. And then I want you to, over the next, I'm going to give you like a really brief period of time, the next three days and nights before you go to bed, and, and when you get up in the morning, in your morning routine, I want you to review that purpose statement. And I want you to just let your brain ideate, create ideas and possibilities. And then I want you to start to run those down as it relates to what jobs are out there, what industries are out there that would allow me to do this kind of work every day. If the thought of attending a networking event makes you break out in hives, you're not alone. 
and I'll let you in on a secret. Networking in the traditional sense doesn't work, but genuine connection is all about relationships. That's why we created networking the right way. This free guide is the low pressure, high impact way to overcome the awkwardness, build real relationships, and turn your connections into opportunities. To get the guide, go to kencoleman.com slash network. Helping you get the competitive edge so that you're making more money and experiencing more meeting in your work. This is the Ken Coleman Show. I'm Ken. 844-747-2577 is the phone number to jump in. 844-747-2577. You can email us, ask at kencoleman.com if you want to schedule your call. And uh, check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Search the Ken Coleman Show on Facebook at Ken Coleman on the gram. Um, for those of you that are over the age of 50, when I say the gram, I'm referring to Instagram. So make sure you check that out. All right, let's get to Midland, Texas. Mike is on the line. Mike, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey there, Ken. This is Mike. Hey, Mike. What's happening in Midland, Texas? Yes, sir. So um, quick backstory. I'm in the oil and gas business here, mm-hmm. uh, working for an oil and gas company. And uh, I'm currently employed, been with this company about nine years now. Yep. And I uh, applied to go work for a different company. I've had a phone interview and a Zoom interview. It's been two weeks and a day. And uh, I'm just getting kind of uh, to the point where I want to reach out for feedback if that status of my application. Have you reached out at all? No, no, I have not. Not in two and a half weeks. Okay. Um, I'd send a handwritten note and an email, and I'd leave a voicemail. And I'd do it all on the same day. So write the note to the hiring manager or to the person that interviewed you or whoever kind of was your lead contact. And uh, I'm going to tell you what to put in all three of these because it's the same recipe, right? Same formula. So it is a thank you sandwich. You're going to thank them uh, for the opportunity to do the interview. Okay. Um, and you are going to tell them next uh, – how excited you are about the possibility of working there. And then you're going to thank them one more time uh, for considering you uh, and that you'd love to hear back. And that's it. And so you do that in the form of a voicemail. Do it after hours so that, you know, you don't want to put them on the spot and call them during the day. Um, And I'm going with the low-key approach here, folks. Uh, Because in this day and age, if you haven't heard back in two weeks... That used to mean something. It doesn't necessarily mean anything anymore. And companies don't reach back out to you. They don't tell you. Everybody's ghosting everybody in today's world. It's the, it's one of the many negative things that social media has done for us. You know, right? We don't yeah, use the human uh, touch. So that's it. Do the handwritten note, the voicemail, and send the email, and then let it go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The only reason I'm, I'm even kind of in a hurry. So here in these companies, this two week, three week deal is kind of common, even getting on where I got on here. Yeah. But, um, we're, I'm actually scheduled, uh, in two days for my mid year evaluation at my current company. And I don't want to go in there with my employer talking about plans, you know, two or three year development plan when I'm possibly going to be leaving. Why not? I have to give them a two week notice in a, in a, in a couple of days, you know? Well, but you can't, you have no control over that. You don't know if that's even going to happen. Yeah. So I just didn't want to go through the whole, not that I didn't want to go through it. I, I didn't want to lead them and their energy down the wrong path. Well, wh- what's the option? You just say, hey, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to show up for my meeting about two and three year plans because I'm planning to leave you guys. Is that the, that's the only alternative. Right. So, so it's not about not showing up. It's about, you know, cause, cause I've been through nine of these mid-year evaluation plans and, and they get pretty lengthy about an hour. And I'm not talking about, I don't want to sit through it. I just didn't want to exhaust my supervisor. Yeah. I know. I know, Mike, plan. I know what you're saying, but what's the alternative? You don't have a job offer in hand. And I don't right. think you want to walk in there and tell them, Hey, let's just skip the hour because I'm planning to leave you guys. Are you? Are you planning to say that to them? No, I mean I would never do that without having a another thing in place. I know. So my point is, is we got to walk forward. We got to do what we know we got to do today. 
You have to sit through the hour. Right. Yeah. And you don't have an offer. So, so here's, so let me play this out. So let's say you do this and you find out two days later that this company does call you back. It doesn't matter. You've done nothing wrong. You didn't have an offer prior to that. Is that, I'm trying to set you free. You're thinking too hard. Right. You're right. So I shouldn't feel guilty about, hey, man, I'm sorry we just sat through that hour conversation. No. You through that. No. Yeah. Guilt, guilt is reserved for people who do something wrong. <laughs> Folks, Mike's not the only person that calls me on this. I get this call probably about as much as any theme. Listen, folks, you leaving somebody is not wrong. The way you leave them might be wrong, but you deciding to go somewhere else is not morally or legally wrong. Are you wondering if you should leave your current job or stay put? You're not alone. That's why we created the Should I Quit My Job quiz. In just five minutes or less, this quiz will help you determine if you're at the right company and if you're in the right role. If you need to make a move, you'll even get practical next steps to keep you moving forward. Listen, stuck is a choice, and life is too short not to do what you were created to do. To take the quiz, go to kencoleman.com slash quiz. All right, question for you folks. Have you ever had a moment when you discover something new? Oh, I love discovering something new. Uh, I, Joe, uh, was in the uh, golf shop that I like to frequent for my hobby that's really causing me great strife and struggle. Yes. And uh, I discovered a new type of golf ball. The way that it, the color, the finish on the golf ball. And so I got excited. See, it doesn't have to be something big, folks. But when we discover something new, well, it's always kind of fun. And it changes our outlook. I'm like, oh, well, this is this is kind of fun. Maybe I'll play this kind of ball. Will this ball be straighter? Will it fly straighter? I don't know. Further? Yeah, that's what they tell you. Uh, but maybe it's when you picked up a new hobby or moved to a new city. But what if you could discover a new job? A new job where you were in your sweet spot. That's where you're using what you do best to do work you love to produce results that actually matter to you. And what if it was in a great culture where you where you were valued and you enjoyed being around the people you work with and you actually enjoyed working for your leader? It wasn't somebody who was shoveling out horrible bossery at you every day. Well, ZipRecruiter can help you find that job, especially now that you know what you're looking for because you listen and watch this show. ZipRecruiter is like a personal recruiter pitching your profile to employers and sending you jobs that match, match your skills and experience. By the way, they do all this for you. You're living your life. You're not filling out 20 resumes every day, hit and go, and then listening for crickets. ZipRecruiter can help you. That awesome job is right around the corner. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. By the way, it's free to you. Companies pay ZipRecruiter for talent. You don't pay a nickel. So I'm not selling you anything, you cynics. I know what you're thinking. I get it. I think the same thing. ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Go today. All right, Amy's up in Abilene, Kansas. Amy, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. Hi, Amy. What's up? Um, So I have taken early retirement from teaching this year, okay. and I am trying to figure out on my resume how to transfer those teaching skills to business skills. Oh, I love this question. Okay, let's get really practical. I want you to tell me, I'm, I've got my pencil out here and my moleskin. What are your top teaching skills, the ones that you would put on a resume? How would you word them? Um, that I was organized and detailed and I could address different issues with that students had, whether they were, you know, um, students who were on target and making, um, making connections with the lessons and learning and those who needed extra help with the learning probably is the top one, just making connections with families and students so that there was that seamless process in education. I love Those that. Those are probably the top two. 
Okay, well, you actually, that's why I asked you to do this. You listed more than two skills. So I wrote down organized. Then I wrote down adaptable because that's a soft skill that people love seeing on resumes. And you as a teacher are adaptable. You gave me a long paragraph of what that looked like. You're adaptable with different types of students. You got the student who is, I call them the assembly line student. Like my brother, can't stand these people. They're great at everything. They just show up. You can put them in a classroom with 35 people. They do the assignment on time. They study. They get good grades. And so you deal with those kids one way. Then you got the kid who struggles a little bit, right? Maybe has some right. learning challenges. Then you got the kid who's not motivated at all. And you're adaptable uh, in, in, in working with different types of personalities. That is a fascinating skill, and I'd put it exactly that way on the resume. I'm very okay. adaptable in dealing with different types of personalities and learners, right? right? Then then you started talking about communicating. See, you're communicating to parents, to the principals, to the guidance counselors, to the students. you got great communication skills. And then I would put in there, in my assessment, the Get Clear Career Assessment, one of the talents is connection. It's different than communication. Connection is the people that have this knack of just they right. can make friends with anybody you know these people you know what i'm talking about they just can connect yes. with anybody i think you've got that so, so i just put you through a i, I kind of answered your question with a question and i hope you see what i've just done have you seen what i just did to you yes i did see you're hung up on this idea that because you've been a teacher most of your career that you don't know how to transfer your skills or at least talk about the transference of your skills and experience but the bottom line is the same skills in the classroom that you have are the same way you talk about the skills in the workplace. Okay. It's not two I, different languages. I have one more question for you. Go for it. Well, actually two now. All right. You something up. Okay. Um, I'll see what the, I can do. <laughs> the financial coach master team training yes i did that and uh -huh. i would like to add it to my resume where should i put that on my resume well it depends are you using the ken coleman resume template um i haven't yet but my plan is to go ahead and great switch over to that one right and and by the way i would help you whether you use mine or not but we put <laughs> what i've got is a resume template that just pops because we use different language right who I know right. is the very first heading. Who puts that on the resume? People that watch and listen to my show and who want to get noticed. That's who. And so we've got a category called what I've done, if you recall that. Correct? Right. And that's where I'd put only relevant experience and all of your teachings relevant, but I would put in there that you've gone through financial coach master training. I would absolutely put that there in the what I've done. Okay. What's your third question? Okay, my third question is, can you give me some other examples besides adaptable of the soft skills? Yeah, sure. So uh, when I told you connection, that's a soft skill. Right. So the ability to connect with people, the ability to communicate with people, that's a soft skill. Um, I think that uh, reliability is a soft skill. The idea that, you know what, I can count on you. In other words, oh. you give your word to a coworker or you give your word to a leader that you're going to get it done, they know you're going to get it done. Um, soft skills could include things like um, of the ability to read people, to discern, right? Um, right. So, so any people skill, anything you put under the category of people skill is considered a soft skill in my mind. So I would focus on all of your people skills. And again, we walk through some of those. But your ability to discern what's going on with a kid in the classroom, phew, discernment's a superpower in my mind. The ability to then oh. connect and get that kid to kind of unveil what's going on and verify what you thought was going on. Then the ability to communicate with that kid, how to overcome that. Those are all soft skills. So that's how I would word those things. Because I think my guess is you're going to be looking for people-focused work. Correct? Correct. Well... So I break down the world at work. This is for you, and this is for the greater audience. I want to pull everybody in here. I take down the world at work, and I, and I would say the entire world of work can be categorized into four general areas. People work, process work, idea work, things work. 
Okay. So people work. We understand that process work. Those are your organized. Those are your COOs. Those are your, uh, project managers, that kind of stuff. Idea work. I'm in the idea workspace and I'm also in people. So I'm coming up with content and ideas and products and things like the assessment and writing books and coming up with ways to teach things to, for people to grab an idea for transformation. And then things work. That's where my brother, uh, he, he, he's very gifted. He's a construction, owns his own construction company. Guy could fix his own car. I could barely put gas in the car. So people that work with their hands and their head and they build things or fix things, uh, that's that's the thing. So so you are you're interested in, and you love people focused work. And the good news is you have a lot of people skills. So you got to see yourself that way. And so I hope that helps you, Amy, uh, as well as others. Uh, for those of you who are kind of trying to get ideas and you take my get clear assessment, you just, you, we automatically categorize the questions in the assessment in those four areas, because I'm just telling you, that's where everybody falls in those major categories. So do you love people work? Yes, are I you, do. Good. And are you good at people work? Yes, I am. All right. So go look for any kind of job that is people focused and you're going to win there. And see, that's the simplicity. And that's where the confidence comes from. So there you go. Amy, you're awesome. Thank you for trusting me. Thank you so much for the call. The best is yet to be. For the rest of you, this is the Ken Coleman Show. Press on. Thanks for listening to The Ken Coleman Show. For more, you can find the show on demand wherever you listen to podcasts and watch the show on YouTube. You can also find Ken across all social media by following at Ken Coleman.